major cause of death in Western civilizations is cardiovascular disease, uh, which is such as occlusion of coronary arteries, the development of plaques which cause these occlusions, the um, exit of the plaque into the bloodstream causing thrombosis, uh, causing heart attacks or strokes, and so on. So what is it that causes atherosclerosis, this thickening of the blood vessels? One of the biggest causes is injury to the endothelium. So the endothelium, as you can see in this picture, the endothelium is the cells that act as a barrier between blood flow and between the tissue. So the function of the endothelium, a properly functioning endothelium that's not injured, produces chemicals which block coagulation so that you don't get blood clots forming. A properly functioning endothelium acts to uh, dilate when the blood vessel is, important, is supposed to be dilated or constrict. Dysfunction of endothelium is associated not only with cardiovascular disease but also things such as hypertension where the endothelium is uh, causing the blood vessel to constrict too much. Now, what causes injury to the endothelium? Well, a variety of things, such as oxidative stress, such as age, such as poor control of sugar, and of course, cholesterol. Now, a very important finding was that the bone marrow has stem cells, that it continually releases them at a lower level that heal injured endothelium. So this gave rise to the whole idea of circulating endothelial progenitor cells. A type of cell that comes from the bone marrow and once the endothelium is injured, it heals it. So, one of the very important papers that was published um, that basically set the stage for the study of circulating endothelium progenitor cells was a paper we'll discuss today, which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And what the investigators did is they made a correlation between circulating endothelial progenitor cells and cardiovascular risk. How do you measure cardiovascular risk? The Framingham study, which began in the 1950s, examined approximately 5,000 people and segregated them into various risk factors and saw which ones developed uh, cardiovascular disease and which ones didn't. So basically, the Framingham risk score is a compilation of things such as whether a person smokes or doesn't smoke, age, sex, enlargement of the heart, and so on. So this is a scoring system that the higher uh, you score on it, the more likely you are to develop cardiovascular disease. So what the investigators did is they looked at a population of 45 males that had different scores, different risk scores, but did not have the cardiovascular disease didn't have it yet. So they examined 45 patients and set on the, on the x-axis they categorized them according to a Framingham risk score. So the higher it is, the more likely they were to develop cardiovascular disease. On the y-axis, they looked at, the, uh, quantified the number of circulating endothelial progenitor cells, these stem cells that we talked about. And as you can see in the figure, the higher the risk score, the lower the number of circulating endothelial progenitor cells. So then they did another experiment and they wanted to see, is there a relationship between circulating endothelial progenitor cells on the y-axis and actual function of the endothelium? So to measure function of the endothelium, they used the flow-mediated dilation assay. This is basically a test that measures how quickly the endothelium can expand in response to a stimulus. So, as you can see in this figure, the higher number of endothelial um, responsiveness, here they call it brachial reactivity, the higher the ability of the endothelium to, uh, to dilate in response to a stimulus, the higher number on the y-axis of circulating endothelial progenitors. So what the study is saying, and you can read the study in greater detail, which we encourage you to do, basically what it's saying is that there's at least a correlation between circulating endothelial progenitors 
and cardiovascular health. Thank you very much.